Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today we're doing day nine of Acrylic April. By now, this has become a reality. You know you're really in a daily painting. You have accepted that this is no longer a conversation, but this is something that you are participating in. I am so excited to have everybody here. Even if you're here for just this one video, just this one time, you are also completely welcome because anytime we paint, we're brave. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He is going to be tracking me with all of our cameras so you can see every part of the step-by-step -step process. To that end, if you will kindly check your description below, which uh, sometimes you have to open up. They can be a little bit hard to find on mobile. You want to make sure you open it all the way up. You will see a link to the web page for this where you can find the traceable, the printout references, and two extra videos, one including the background and the grid. So you can do that at home and that will help you if you need that extra help. It's there for you. And I say let's jump on in. All right. Okay. So here we are. Reality has sunk in. Daily painting is full on afoot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've got our eight by eight surface prepped and ready to paint. I have it all gridded in. I have my grid reference over here on my palette. Now beautifully labeled, but I'll still go over it verbally. I have CAD yellow, medium hue. I have vermilion. I have deep magenta. I have ultramarine. I have phthalo green. I have primary blue, I have burnt sienna, Naples yellow, Mars black, and titanium whites. That's what I'm going to be using. And today I'm going to try to be even looser. Even looser? Even looser. Even looser. So I've been thinking of different strategies that I could employ to get that looseness, as you know, as one is wont to do. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking what I might do is maybe make a kind of main mix, sort of like what I do with skin tones. For my sand. You know how you make a main mix? Or I do anyways. And then from there, right, try to get some values and some interesting fun stuff going. Seems like a good theory, right? No, maybe? Yeah, I think so. I'm going right. to add a little I'm block to tilt it. this down just a touch. So, well, I guess that's okay. There we go. There's a nice little deep color that I can be using. And so, yeah, every time I'm doing this, I'm like looking for some strategies of like, what could it be? This is a nice little gray option that I could go for. And I can cool and warm from there. I don't really think that's what I'm wanting to do for this whole piece. So I'm going to put a little yellow over here and some more brown and kind of also make an ochre over here as you can. Right, so that's kind of a warmer sand color that I could be working from. And I think the other color I'm going to kind of pre-mix to work into is a purple so that I can cool some of the background. So see, we're doing this prep work this time. We're getting some of these mixes we think we might be using a lot of. So that was the ultramarine and the deep magenta mixed up ahead of time. So we're not having to look for every one of these colors. I wipe off my tool right after and I'm going to also do a turquoise which is my green and primary blue. So today's day eight right? Today is day nine. Wait no today's the eighth. Tomorrow's the ninth. Right. <laughs> You've been doing too many. That's how real it is now Holy guys. Work. I don't even know so, what day it is anymore. It's just gotten real. So we've been doing prep work. So we pre-record. I don't some even prep work. know what day it is. Apparently, and she's like, "Well, today we're recording prep work day nine or <laughs> day 10. So she's like, "Wait a minute, today's what?" <laughs> I so, clearly have no clue. Oh, this is nice. I can take this sort of like brown color and come in and get into my ultramarine and cool it. So yeah, I'm liking this. This is gonna work. So we, we, you know that you got the right color. You're just not sure you're. We got the right day. I have the right colors. Who knows about the day? So today up in the sky, I'm going to take a little of my ultramarine and a little of my primary. I actually quite liked these two together. And I'll add a little white to it for this base area. And then we'll get, uh, you can see it just is coming into the sky. And that will help us really hold the ocean is separate from the sky color. See, so you just took my primary blue and my ultramarine and just a smidge of white for the sky. 
know, fun stuff getting those colors on. And you can see already how the blue underneath is helping us keep it very sky, keep it very cool, get our Mediterranean feel on. You got to love that light, the way it impacts everything. I've got some wonderful little clouds that I'm working out. So I can take bits of this mixture over to my blue and get a kind of shadowing color. And maybe in here, talk a bit about the cloud shadow values that I've got going on. Shadow value here at the base. Yeah, it's, it's such a subtle blend from it, that, isn't that it? background to the colors you're using right now. It is, and it doesn't overwhelm us, right? I really have to zoom in so you can see those uh, differences. And I think it's going to be fun as we're going through and going, you know, can, what can we see? I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow to this cloud. If I can catch, you know, some of these little values that we've got going through, this cloud has a bit of a shadow in the center here. I'm trying to paint looser. You might be trying to paint tighter. You know, we all might have different goals in our painting experience that we are dealing with. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking at my reference and I'm just trying to paint in those shadowy values where I think I might have them. And then I can come back with more and more of my white into that mix and then kind of lighten them up. Clouds are interesting. You can always come on the edge of your brush. Look at this. If you want to catch that little kind of light airiness that happens with clouds. It's always a good way to do it. Softly, softly letting the paint touch the surface, leaving small amounts of itself places, but not pressing so hard. That's making a firm and overwhelming mark. So I'm on this outer edge of things. And I think that's fun, you know, I'm just trying to come here and talk. I'm going to talk very lightly about a, a bit of a light that came on the inside of this little shadow space. And with it being a little bit wet, you can see it just blends on the canvas some. So trying to get into my cumulus here. You like your cumuluses. If you'd like to do the underpainting, we had a little video on that, didn't we? Yes, we have. We actually, we do a value study and we talk about why we're picking the colors that we're picking and how we're going to make any design changes or if we're going to fix anything that maybe we perceive is not ideal for painting in the photograph. I'm going to just keep brushing over this lightly. And then... You can see I'm just dusting over this lightly, but it's keeping that gray value, isn't it? Now, as I see that you're sort of, you've got this, this really good blend going. Yes. But what I've also noticed, you didn't have really great posture when doing that great blend. Oh, you're going to be on me this whole time, aren't you? Well, you should yes, talk why it's is. important. You should talk about why that's important. So what can happen, especially if you're painting every day, if you have a bad posture habit, like John is pointing out to me that I have, you can be exacerbating injuries and believe it or not get a sports style injury going <laughs> <laughs> which is like when your doctor's like well how did you get this and you're like painting they don't look at you with respect i'll tell you that right now <laughs> they're well, like painting actually what, what could you be doing when you're painting that has hurt you so deeply i'm gonna put a little light right here and then there's this big glow of love and they think it's so awesome how much you paint and then they have a lot of respect for you because no. you're committed to that <sighs> but they keep asking if you did something else <laughs> or at least my doctor does. Are you sure it's that i think by now they get that that's what's happening to me but, but it was it a important. journey to get there i'll tell you that right now but it is important to keep your good posture. It really is. Uh, whether you're sitting or standing, uh, be aware if you're twisting your body in an uncomfortable way. And I actually did ask John to let me know if I am because it's just one of those things that can get away from you very, very easily. And I'm super glad that she asked me to do that because I forgot. That I asked you? That you asked me. Oh, so you were just being a bossy pants. <laughs> I was just totally being a bossy pants. <laughs> 
I just I just I did know ask how much you to remind you me so I don't get like, hurt so I can make the whole thing. But that's sort of true. That's what it is. Is it came from love because like at night she she does she has to put a little bandage on like a little compression thing and she yeah, lifts little weights and does little exercises and stretches out to keep them in. This. So back to your blending. I am. I'm. I'm just trying Blending. to get this sort of in here and get a nice little cloudscape going, but one that's loose. I'm not trying to make, like, the most, like, tight, realistic. I just want it to feel like, oh, I've got some lovely clouds. Now, it's interesting. I feel like there's some more light I could put at the top, but that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy at that. I'm going to do my water. So I've got my um, turquoise. I'm going to add a little of my ultramarine to that turquoise. And I'm going to bring that back here. Now, while we are covering a variety of topics here, and most of them very quickly, because the goal of Acrylic April, and especially these daily paintings, is the exercise of that daily painting. So, if you'd like more information on things like clouds, or water, or sand, or flowers, you can go out to our, our website, and there's a search button out there, and, it, and there is a wealth of paintings that Cinnamon has done about clouds, and water, and kraken. So, just put the search word in, mm -hmm. and you'll get the video out. Yep. Now we're going to fill this part right here all with that uh, ultramarine mixed into our turquoise. All right, so we have that nice little wonderful color. And then I'm going to go ahead and get into just a smidge of my white. I'm adding a little more ultramarine to it. And we're going to come here and make some little highlights, right? That kind of represent the little ripples in the ocean coming towards that beach. You want to keep that kind of level, guys, if we can. You'll see me use the brush and then really wipe it off. And what that is about is me just making sure that I don't have too much pigment on there. As I'm coming forward, I'm going to get more into the turquoise. And I'm going to add quite a lot of the white to it. So coming along here, it really starts to show up around here. Yeah, I'm coming along this water line. Yeah. And I'm just using my brush. It's like flat to the canvas so I can come and sweep. And kind of like calligraphy, it really helps me get a nice parallel little stroke. And where I need to merge those two together, I can go back into this and make sure I've got a nice transitional merge. See how we're done? Oh, I like that. I feel like this could have even a little more yellow to it, so I'm going to play with that idea. I'm going to get some of my cad yellow into my turquoise. Pull some wine into it. I can really see it. And come along that little edge there. And talk about that a bit in the water here, which I'm now really glad I did, because I think it's really pretty. I was not trying to interrupt you, babe. No, it's we're just going so fast on these lessons. I know that's why I was. I was you know, a lot of people are, are asking questions about like, how do you do those clouds or how do you do the water? And it's, this acrylic April is about getting the painting done. Yeah, very much so. I'm gonna add a little white to this. These are my distant hills. I'm looking at the color, and you can always ask yourself, does it need more yellow, does it need more red, or does it need more blue? It's a funny thing, but sometimes we forget to ask ourselves that very simple question. Does it need more yellow, need more red, or does it need more blue? Oh, I like that. And then we can always come grab a little bit of our green, and I imagine the green's going to have a bit of our or burnt sienna into it is the distant little hills if you kind of see that there we go so oh i'm very happy with that mm. that's just pretty and light i like that hill <laughs> i know it's a weird funny thing to be excited about but i am I'm going to get some more of this green that I've got here. If I need to deepen it with the actual green, I can. And you can always get some of your brown. 
this part of the rock cliff coming forward. We can talk about that through here, even though we know we've got bushes and other things that we are going to be talking about. That is a good way to think about it and look at it. So I've got this here, which is kind of my little, this is the ultramarine and my burnt sand and a little black and white. I can always get just a little more ultramarine into it where I need to. And that's a nice shadow color. I just really need this grayed out. I'm going to get that distant mountain color. Oh, we're getting there. You see how it's working? Mm -hmm. A little bit of shadow color, distant mountain color, and my white is now starting to be in that range that I'm trying to talk about here. Coming in here with a bit of that. We can pull some of this up here where the rock in the mountain would be kind of talking to each other. And you can always come back with a little bit of green. Like you got to put some back. Put some back. That's nice. Just just something there. And you can again see that the blue is quite helpful coming through. Now as I'm coming forward, right, I'm going to lighten this up quite a good bit. And the beach starts to come right here. So you can see how that pulls right up into our cliff face. I'm going to begin just pulling that. Now, I'm seeing a bit more of the brown, so I'm going to take this, this kind of grade mix in our brown. See if I can catch that front beach stone color. Ooh, that's pretty nice. There's, there's that lighter, sort of darker run of stone. See that that we had there? So just painting that very loose. I've got that little ribbon of that here. And I'm just using my bright brush to get me through this. I'll rinse out. That's really pretty. I think this is going to be one of my favorite days. And get right back into my sand color. You can always grab a little bit of that warm distant mountain mixture that we had. In here, yay, yay, yay! Little ultramarine. So you do want it very light, right? You do want it to be quite light. There it is over the background. So now we've got this nice little beach -a happening. And it feels like there's an even lighter value kind of coming up the hill there, but it's got a smidge of a almost purple cast to it. So I'm going to lean into that. That almost purple cast. I'm going to say the front of these, see there? At the base. I might bring some of that through my beach. Maybe like right here. Do I need to lighten any value? I just get right in here and lighten it up. Whatever you need to do to catch the bright white sands, right? All right, pretty happy with that. Very light, very bright. It feels to me like when I'm looking at our reference in this space that our 
front of our ocean could even be just even greener. Are you noticing that? Yeah. Very light. I don't want to miss that. That's something that would be. There we go. I like that. A little bit better. A little bit yeah. greener, right? Isn't that nice? I like that. It's a little oceany, marine-ish. Which you would see on that type of beach, and it's important to know that it's there, you know? And then if you look at it in there, you kind of see that, oh, wait, there's some kind of darker little color out there. It's, it's right here as if underneath the water. There's some little rocks or elements. Can you guys see that? Yeah. I don't want to not put that in as I'm... There we go. Some of that. Just thought about. We've talked about it. And that's all we're really obligated to do, right? Is on occasion we'll talk about something. So I've got my green. I'm put it into that. I might get a little more yellow into that mix. That muted green. And catch just some of the front of this. Not much. Maybe a little bit of that distance. It's a weird touch, but it was bugging me. Now, this here actually is an interesting challenge for me. So I think I'm going to do my shadow first and then get into that. I'm going to take this brown that I've got and get right into my blue. I do want it to be blue, but I don't want it to be just pure ultramarine. I'm going to get some of my white into it so I can see it. And I'm going to just try to find how blue can I make it. I think that's about the right blue. Yep. So along the base. And first I'm going to come along this edge. See, I'm doing this little edge. Using my brush, just doing that little edge. Yeah. And I can always come back and, and fill it in. And then come here. I'm going to make a little bit of a kind of dappled shadow. We talked about it in the value study that we thought that that had value. The little dappled shadows along this edge. Because they tell us a little bit about the fact that it's not just the cliff shadow, but that it's also casting a little bit of interest on those plants. This is a really great color for this. So I feel like right here, I'm seeing this rock face that has that shadow in it. Yeah. And then maybe some of that here. I can always get a little more brown into it. Get into my rock color. So I'm taking my background. I've still got this crazy mix on here. All right. Oh, just got pink all over my pinky. <laughs> Watch for pink paint. Just try to paint some of this in. That looks like a good color for that, doesn't it? A little more of this on here. A little highlight right there. Sometimes I'll get quiet when I'm going, and that's really about the fact that I'm really having to think. If you're having to really think about what you're doing, that's okay. Especially if you're not trying to paint every single detail, but you're trying to paint 
you know, your impressions of the details, that can get to be real tricky real fast. You're editing out a lot. Yeah, you're editing out a ton. I'm going to put a little more of my yellow onto my brush. And I, I do see a little bit of that yellow here in the rocks. There's a little bit here. There's a fantastic bit I want to talk about that comes down here, isn't there? Just some of that yellow in that space. Back into our gray. A lot more white. And find where we can add those highlights. See if we can render them as accurately as we possibly can. And that's what I'm doing is I'm just trying to find where I can put those values in a meaningful way, not in a crazy way, but in a meaningful way. Now, I think I'm going to do a thing here to help pull the rock and everything, though we do have a bit of that where the shadow comes across and it, it, they do touch. And so I'm going to just try to make sure that by adding a little bit of white to that mix in from the rock, see, I can make it stand out a bit Oh yeah, from the shadow that's below it. So we're still reading it as like a rock face. And that's what I'm trying to help us do is read it as a rock face. We need to see that. Now, the bush in front and up top, this is that to me is going to be a ton of fun. So, I'm going to take my green over to my burnt sienna. What are those mysterious peach flowers? Oh, they're bougainvillea. Don't eat them, they will kill you dead. But All right. You would also don't burn them in your fireplace. Here's a public service announcement for you. <laughs> Do not eat, ingest, or burn bougainvillea for any reason. It's super deadly. Huh. And if you do it by mistake, the cops won't believe you and they will still come to your house. A neighbor of ours did that. He was burning off his dead wood and he put the bougainvillea in the fireplace. And it took a very long time for him to convince <laughs> the police force that it was not an intentional act to kill his wife. <laughs> Who didn't die, but... No, the original Mrs. Cartman, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I understand why they were believing that. All right, so I'm just trying to capture the mass of the screen. All right, because we have this deep value of the green that we have to really kind of think about. And I may come in... There's two ways that I can do this. I can get into my, my brown and maybe a little black. Let me see if I can do this interesting technique. I've seen this done. I've got enough of an edge on my brush. I'm trying to see if I can do this without even getting into my round. What are you doing there? Making fine lines. Look at me go. Oh, I see. Just using. I think you're just leaning a little. Okay. That's okay. I just, you know, just noticing that you're. Maybe if I go like this, I can stay out of your way. You know, rotating that surface. Yeah. Maintaining that good posture. I'm talking about these little bits that are happening. Not hassling your wife live? Well, we've all met you. We know. You have a, you have, your job is literally to hassle, isn't it? I think that I'm the, I'm, I'm the virtual heckler. The virtual heckler, John Cooney. I'm just trying to capture little bits of these as they're going, and then I can take a bunch of this deep, value green that we've got. Still on my brush, but now I'll work my corner. And I'll put out some little dabs of this darker value because some of these leaves would be, what, in shadow, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah, I see. What I would highly suggest is not to just rush through. Right? Yes, we're on a timer and we're trying to be present to the time. But also, don't take away your chance to just think a little bit about where the plops of paint are going. So, Lynn was curious. Hi, Lynn. Why are you using such a large brush for such a relatively small canvas? 
helps me loosen up. If you get a smaller brush, besides having to do many, many more brush strokes in an area, um, it can lend into tightening up. If I have to work around the fact that I can't make a lot of fussy detailed strokes, then it does help me loosen up. And it's something I, I do not uh, feel alone. That's actually a feeling of many, many artists. In fact, uh, sometimes I actually get a little bit of trolling from artists over the variance of my brushes on my show. Hmm. Not all artists, just some. I hadn't noticed. Well, you don't do the comments. <laughs> I do the comments. Just heckling my wife some more. <laughs> like, I didn't notice. Really? When you didn't do the comments? So, the... Uh... So, just catching those first bits of these. And so, I can let the blue show through. But I need to have that part of the plant worked out. So, we're just still dabbing. John can ask me questions and heckle me all he wants. I am not bothered. Don't have to write in and be like, oh, this makes me so mad. No, it's okay. <laughs> I make her totally mad enough at home. Yeah. We married like decades. We, we're so married. We're not, I mean, like we're in it now. We're in it to win it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like. <laughs> at this point, you can't opt out, you know. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So, <laughs> I need passed. to make some lovely highlights. I'm wondering if I needed to put out my Naples yellow now. I really like how the bush provided an anchor of middle ground to separate the foreground from the that sort of background. I object. did too, and that was a lot in my selection of it. So Very. Good. I'm adding some of my muted color here because if you'll notice, they're bright. Oh, I can't notice because you bring. I'm gonna have to adjust down a little bit. Okay, that's right. So, um, that's right. I just moved down a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're okay. So I'm just using the mix from the beach, a little of my yellow and my green, and this is how I'm gonna be working my lighter values. But you'll notice that they're not um, completely just saturated green spaces. I really like how those dark background leaves make those other leaves that you're putting in now really just sort of, a, it looks, it, it reads like a bush. It reads like a little bush, but loose yeah. and expressive. And that is, like you guys, sometimes I have a little trouble loosening up. I tend to get uh, a little bit into my rendering of my images. And what that means is that um, I have a strong sense of narrative in the work, and I tend to want to tighten up and have clean spaces. Nothing wrong with it, but it's important to have some other skills in your paint box. You know, you don't want to be doing things by default. I got skills in my paint box. You got some skills. You got some skills in your paint box? I got, like, breakdancing skills and... Napoleon Dynamite style skills, I see. <laughs> What's nice when you put some of these lighter values into it, it looks a little like leaves catching um, light. And that can be quite nice. You know, you're just trying to capture some of that. I'm paying attention, just trying to think about like, where would a leaf maybe turn in the wind and Capture some light. I'm going to get a little more yellow onto here and now a bit of a white. And just talk about a couple little highlights everywhere. A few of them or maybe something might have caught more light. See what we're doing? I see it. Yeah, I love it. Now, uh, sorry about the Naples yellow. Did the Naples yellow do something to it you? It didn't do anything. We didn't use it. <laughs> oh. It okay. was just some lonely I'll yellow. put a little note in the comments. All right. So now I, to get this Bougainvillea color... I'm going to at first mix one to one of my vermilion and my magenta. And you can see that's straight on the Bougainvillea color, but we need a dark 
shadow version of it. So I'm going to get that purple I made earlier. Oh, yes. Yes, I am. Look at me go. The dark version of it. You know, that Naples yellow would make a really excellent signature color. I will use it. Okay. That's a good idea, sweetheart. <gasps> Don't go and dismiss so that So where Naples I'm putting yet. little clusters of flowers, which I do want to do, I'm going to use this darker value, and that's going to be the depth of the flowers. Oh, and I have a little spot inside them where they have little yellow dots. Maybe I can put it there. There's a great little, there's a thread going on here, and I'm not sure if Lynn or, her, or who had started this. It's great, maybe Lindsay. Mm -hmm. But they were asking, what's a good material if you wanted to sketch in and lay out some of your flowers or clouds? Is there, is, would a chalk, you know, using chalk pencils? Yeah, you know, you can do color studies or kind of experimentations with watercolor, with chalk. If you're talking about the gridding, chalk or pastels, as long as the pigment load is not too high. Graphite can bleed up, so you have to just be aware of that when you're using pencils that it can come up into your paint and show. Um, <sighs> Cero paper is pretty awesome. Hmm. And I've used it before um in my if you're asking about like what we're transferring images on the well, canvas but if, if you wanted if you were just to like sketch in like that uh your bougainvillea is there with a piece of chalk you can just erase chalk. it with water yeah the chalk will just vanish into vanish into it yeah and i may exaggerate a little bit with some of my flowers like this this bush wasn't particularly like in bloom right but that doesn't mean we can't exaggerate just a few little blooms extra extra i don't mind some can extra. be a little extra there we go put a little extra right there because extra is oh it's already so cheerful i'm really happy with this my favorite so far is very nice that's what i say every time right <laughs> you but you know what's okay you have 30 days to figure out which one's your your favorite yeah, and, and I'm really pleased that I feel like I'm reaching my goals here. That I really, really enjoyed. I feel like I've got a good little Bougainville mix going. And it looked very much like the crazy magenta that we're seeing there. Let's see if I can capture some of that. I'm just using the corner of my brush. So you see it's really loaded with paint. going well you know take a minute you can always sit back and look I forget to do that I'm here teaching all the time and I've got to remember because when I'm painting on my own I tend to get back yeah and I'm such a backseat driver anyway so now I think we're catching a little bit of that backseat painter that's yeah, I like them. You've earned they're, the right. They're popping. They're popping. I'm your co-pilot. I'm just picking up little bits of it, right? I'm not being crazy. I'm not being messy. Now, are you getting a little impasto with that? In that, yeah, I'm just like letting the paint touch it in its... Oh, that went a little out of focus. Or is that how I'm painting? <laughs> well, I, you know, it's... <laughs> Wait, I'm pretty is sure it it's, you yeah, or no, it's, it's is it me? Uh, I'm, I'm going to get a little white into this mix. And... Just a little white and maybe even get a little yellow into it. Look at that. I don't want to get into a flesh tone, but I'm going to make some little sunlit pops. Ah, yep, that's them. Just catching a bit of light on some of these blooms. Oh, isn't that lovely? So that's where it is right there. A little bit there. Oh, so pretty. This is going to be great when we get to the garden. A little too much white. And if you get a little too much white, you can just come back with your main color and be like, yeah, a little less white than you.
I'm gonna mute it back and not be overwhelmed. I think we're there. Yeah. I feel like this is fantastic. I'm like so prepped for the parrot tomorrow, so which good. actually is day nine. It just needs your little Naples yellow. It does, but wait. I'm gonna take a little detail brush. But wait, there's more. I'm gonna be playful because we put it out. You don't have to do this. It's just a thing that some of the Bougainvilleas have. What are you doing up there? Well, some of them have little, little. I don't know if you see them. They're like little centers in them. So I'm just putting in a few little centers. Because I put it out anyways. Gotcha. Could be here a couple places, right? Like little bits of something. There we go. We used it. <laughs> You don't have to put the centers in at all. Though they do kind of look nice, don't they? Oh, they do. <laughs> I don't know, the weird thing. That's a, This is a detail brush. You could do this with the back of your brush, too. If ever you have to do, like, if you're painting one big brush, the back of this is actually quite pointed, and you can load a little paint on there and get little details done, which I totally forgot to do for my coffee cup when I was thinking about, like, how to do the dots. I'm going to take my Naples yellow. One on my brush. Actually, this is a good signature color for this painting because it'll show but not overwhelm the piece. Oh, wait, tomorrow's a poppy. Is, oh, yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm working so far ahead, guys, I don't even know what day it is. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I have to make sure that I'm prepared. For that. For the next one? Yeah. You know, it's one of those days where, you know, you're... Ever you mess your signature up and you have to erase it. Oops. If I just did. Did you? Yeah. Happens. You just can, while the paint's still wet, you can clean it up and remove it. And then get back into it. Totally fine. That's looking really good. The longest signature ever. <laughs> ah, all right. Hold on, just say I get. I'm stuck on another page. Oh, I love that shadow. It's my oh. favorite. I don't know what my favorite part of the piece is. Hold on, just a second. I'm uh, stuck. I can go over here. You have to give me. Just a oh, second. oh, there it goes. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Do you love it? I hope you love yours. I know it's a journey to loosen up. I know it's almost counterintuitive because we want to take in everything we see and put it back out on a canvas. And, and finding a place to edit as artists is so important. And, you know, uh, it's real easy to get in the habit of tightening it up. And every once in a while, doing some exercises to loosen back up, man, it's freeing. And it helps you get in there and be more confident. I'm seeing some. I'm actually becoming fans of some of the artists sharing in Acrylic April. Oh, me too. <laughs> and people are so creative. And everyone in there is my hero. Like, I have seen some of the most brave, amazing things being shared. Just great art and the commitment and dedication and support and love I'm seeing just impresses and inspires me. I love that you guys are loving your custom photo frames so much. I think that's really cool. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for the poppy, which is going to be actually quite a lot of fun and really beautiful. Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.